All right. Sorry. Ran out of memory. Sharing tablet with family members. But um, this is how breasts work. The action that causes your body to create milk is the sucking on the breast. That's, that's what activates your body and lets it know that milk needs to be created. This is why in the first couple of days after your baby is born, and this is um, whether your baby was born prematurely and is in NI, NICU, NICU or NICU, and I've, I've had children that had to go to NICU, whether your child is born one time and is there in the room with you, whether you have your child at home, a birthing center, or in a hospital. Wherever you have your child, those first couple of days, you do not have any milk coming out because there hasn't been anything to activate your breast to start the process of making milk. And so what causes the milk-making process is the sucking on the breast. So once the breast has been suckled, then the body, the hormones, and all of the cues that your body needs in order to begin the process of milk-making kick in, and you begin the process of making milk. That's what happens. That's what cues it. So there's no way to make too little because as often as your baby needs to nurse is how often, as often and as long as your baby needs to nurse is what will determine how much milk your body produces. Your, milk, your body is going to produce milk that is exactly what that baby needs. It is the perfect food for that particular baby. Because your body is producing it according to the needs and the wants of that baby. So there's no way to produce too little. If you feel that you are producing too little, for whatever reason, I'm here telling you that it's not possible, then the way to produce more is to let the baby eat more often. That's how you produce more. That's, that's just a simple truth. So there's no way not to produce enough, and the only way to produce more is to have the baby suckle more often. Don't be afraid. If there was some if there was one lesson that I could teach women about our bodies is that they are doing what they are supposed to do. It is a lesson that I have fine-tuned from my midwife. I have a wonderful midwife. Her name is Heather. She lives here in Nashville. I don't know if she's still practicing because she had been delivering babies for a long time when she began to deliver my babies. But Heather Wilson, she used to have a um, vegan restaurant on Division Street in Nashville called Country Life. And the name of her clinic was Country Life Midwifery Clinic. And what she would say to me when I got to that moment of transition and I was in the process of convincing myself that I couldn't do this, she would look into my eyes and say, your body was made to do this. And that is the simple, beautiful, powerful, life-changing, life-giving, nobody can touch it, nobody can take it from you, truth of being a woman. Your body was made to do this. Your body was made for this destiny. Once you've brought a child into the world, I have women who come to me for um, parenting counseling. And they have somehow had a belief pushed into them that this child has needs that they can't meet. Your body was made to do this. Your life was made to do this. This is your destiny. The universe would not, you would not create a being that has needs that you can't meet. Relax, understand, know, stand in it, embrace it, be it. The only way to produce more milk is to breastfeed. Ain't none to it but to do it. That is the simplistic truth and power of breastfeeding. There, there is a story and it's true and it didn't happen, well, it wasn't long ago to me, but it probably really was long ago. But I feel like it was around the time that I had given birth to my daughter that's now 19 years old. And there were some people who were shipwrecked. And one woman on the boat who was breastfeeding, and she kept everybody on the ship, grown people, alive. And whatever baby there was she was breastfeeding with just her breast milk. Come And y'all will have to Google it. I don't know the references, but it was about 19 years ago. Come on, you guys. 
if that is happening and if that can happen, then you have this one baby that you think that you can't feed enough. It is a ridiculous thought. Don't allow anyone to fill you with that kind of fear, with that type of illogical fear. It's simply not true. That's just not true. And then trust your body. Trust the ancestral mothers. Trust the universe. We would have ceased to exist millions upon millions of years ago if there was some mechanism by which these breasts could not produce enough milk to sustain life. Humankind would have ceased to exist because formula, as I keep saying, only came out around 1940, and that may be early. I may be thinking a little early. I can only think about you know, well, no, it wouldn't have been 1940 because my mother, let me think, maybe not, maybe the 50s. It would have had to have been the 50s when formula came out. So if the formula has only been around since the 1950s, so all those other millions and trillions and billions of years of, of humankind going all the way back to that first ancestral mother, Dinka Nash, how did we continue to be if people's breasts wasn't producing enough milk? It is, it's a ludicrous thought. And I'm not saying that babies didn't die of, of, you know, of different things and that, you know, all of the babies from that time, you know, have uh, lived. That's not my point. But my point is, in general, the body of a human woman who has not had something medically done to her breasts that will allow them not to, that, that puts them in the position not to produce enough milk, can make enough milk to sustain the life of her child until they are five years old. That is the truth. Anybody who's telling you anything else, anybody who's saying it doesn't look like he's getting enough, it doesn't look like she's getting enough, they're lying. They're just telling you a lie. And they have some sort of fear based upon food and based upon a misunderstanding of food, based upon a misunderstanding of how your body works, and based upon the misunderstanding of just basic human needs. Sometimes the baby wants to nurse just because they want to be close to you. Food is included in that, but breast milk is not just food. If I see that my child is cold and I reach over and I put my arm around my child to, to warm them, them being in my embrace is them getting warm, yes, but there's so many other things that they get from just being in my embrace, and that is the same, uh, the same truth of breast milk. So there are times when a baby wants to nurse that it may not have anything to do with a physical hunger. And that's fine too. You're there for that too. You are made and created to be that for that baby. And being that for that baby raises that baby, raises them up to, to be able to walk and to be able to talk and to be able to, to, um, to, and to think analytically. That's what you do for that baby, but it also raises you. It takes you to a higher level of womanhood. Every child that you nurse, every child that you give birth to, every child that you raise takes you to a higher level of womanhood and it allows you to stand in a particular type of confidence and to know that there isn't any obstacle that you can't go through. You have sustained lives with simply the juices that flow from your body naturally. Come on now. If that's not power then power does not exist. Power is power of. Power over domination is abuse. That's not power. The ability to make someone do something because they are afraid of you, that's not power. That's abuse. That's domination. But the ability to sustain life, not just, not only is this baby's life being sustained, but your life is being sustained and uplifted and you get better, you get healthier. While you're sustaining life through the juices that flow from your body naturally, that a touch causes to begin to flow. That is power. And that's what you're being cut off from when someone tells you you can't produce enough milk. That statement is a conundrum. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. It is like telling someone who inhales that they, they can't exhale. And I'm not talking about people who have illnesses that actually make that impossible. But it's, it's not possible. It's like saying you can't, you can't blink your eyes. and You're sitting there doing it. 
and somebody saying you can't produce enough milk. It's, it's, there's no such thing. There is no such thing as not producing enough milk. Do not allow anyone to convince you of that. Now, live your life, sisters. Live your life. Your child came to be a part of your destiny. And I always say, and I will always say, mother as you. Do not mother as your grandmother. Do not mother as me. Do not mother as your best friend. Do not mother as, you know, whatever beautiful, wonderful mother we've seen on television that we all want to be. Claire Huxtable or Leave it to Beaver's mother. Any of those people. Mother as you. With that being said, if there are things that you have to do throughout the day that will take you away from being with the baby, then still have the breast milk there for the child. Pump the breast milk and let it be there for the child. It's, it is not optimum. And I'm, I am a single mother, so please don't think that I'm speaking from a place of judgment. Because everything that I'm suggesting are things that I have had to do. Have the breast milk available for the child. Pump the breast milk so that it's available for the child. What I do when I have to work outside of the home is I either find a work at home position or I find a position that's close to my home so that on my breaks and on my lunch break, I can go home and nurse the baby. Or I find a position that's close to wherever the child is. When my um my baby that's now 19, when she was born, I put her in the day, a daycare that was walking distance from the place that I was working. So it was maybe 10 minutes walking distance. And I put her there, and so anytime I had a moment, I could go and breastfeed her. That's And, and when I couldn't do it, then I would go and pump. It, yes, it requires that kind of sacrifice. Yes. But remember that you want to be whole and you want to be healthy and you want to receive everything that you need. And most certainly you want your child to be healthy and whole and receiving everything that they need. Um, what you are seeking and what you are working toward is a time and a space in which, you, in which you guys can be together and bond for the majority of the day. But I live in this world just like you do, and I know that that is not always a possibility. So when that isn't a possibility, make the breast milk available. Just do it. Just make it available. Just do it. Don't, don't think about it. Don't make it not a big thing. It is what it is. Make it available, ladies. Make it available. But if you are in the in the position to be there with the child, there is no way that you're not producing enough milk. And anyone who, who is telling you that you're not producing enough milk because the child is wakeful or because the child wants to be more often is, is telling you something crazy. Because the only way for you to produce more milk is for the baby to, to nurse more often. So if they're saying because he's nursing more often, you're not producing enough milk, they're talking crazy because you can't make more milk unless the baby doesn't nurse, unless the baby nurses more. That is the truth of nursing. That's how breasts work. That's how your bodies work. If you walk away from this particular discourse with one thought, sisters, walk away with the thought that your body was made to do this. Your body was made. To fulfill this destiny. It was created to fulfill this destiny. There is no barrier to this body fulfilling the divine destiny that the spirit of which this body is an outgrowth came here to fulfill. There's no blockage.